From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Lawan Jirasuradev. From a square box with two antennas to a thin high-resolution screen conveniently installed in some corners of our houses, television has been an essential electronic device in the daily life of people around the world. It has been the key source of information and entertainment for us, young and old, men and women. Members of an entire family used to sit in front of their television set and watch a show together. That is changing as people around the world become more mobile and prefer to get their information and entertainment from their personal portable devices at the time they want and where they want rather than having to stay in front of their TV set at home. Changing media behavior is threatening television. Traditional television has been facing fierce competition and an uncertain future due to the growing popularity of streaming services in recent years. This is because streaming technology serves people's need of mobility. eMarketer, a global frequently cited market research company based in the United States, has reported that television viewership in the United States has constantly declined since 2011, although the COVID-19 pandemic has contributed to a temporary increase in television viewing in 2020. eMarketer expected that the viewing would drop again in 2021. In Thailand, television viewership has also been shrinking, even during prime time in the evening. This happens despite the fact that almost all households in Thailand now own at least a television set. In 2019, the National Statistical Office of Thailand reported that the country led Asia-Pacific in terms of ownership of television sets, as more Thai households own a television set than other countries in the region. A research by Nielsen, a global market survey company based in the United States, found that average television ratings during the prime time from 6 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. of Thai audience below 35 years old decreased gradually from 2019 to the middle of February 2021. Even among people above 35, who are considered as the main television watchers, the growth in ratings was minimal during the same period of time. The system of television ratings is established to measure television viewership based on who is watching what, at what time, and how economic and social status affects viewing choices. This means that, in general, Thai people have been watching television less and less. Specifically, major mainstream channels are no exception. Take Channel 7, or currently known as Channel 35, one of the most prominent mainstream television channels in Thailand, as an example. In 2020, the annual television rating by Nielsen revealed that the average number of Thai people who watch Channel 35 throughout the year declined by approximately one and a half times compared to the number six years ago. Fewer viewers, of course, mean lesser spending on them by advertisers. At the same time, streaming services with its rising accessibility and popularity, have become the new avenue for advertising. First, part of advertising spending on television has been allocated to streaming services. Consequently, television channels suffer because advertising is their major incomes. Looking at expenditure on television advertising in Thailand in 2020, Nielsen reported that the monthly spending now ranged from around 125 million US dollars to 172 million US dollars. This is considerably lower than the amount six years ago, when the television sector often earned almost 190 million US dollars a month from commercials. 
declining spending on television advertising, and strong competition in Thailand eventually led to the closure of seven digital television channels in 2019. Earlier, two other channels ceased their operation on the same reason. Their cessation happened only after they earned their operation license from the regulated National Broadcasting and Telecommunications Commission, or NBTC, in 2014. Helping us to gain a better understanding of current situation of mainstream television in Thailand is Dr. Jesada Salatong, a lecturer at Department of Mass Communication, as well as Chairperson of Master of Arts in Strategic Communication Management at Faculty of Communication Arts, Jhulalongkorn University. Let's hear what Dr. Jesada will be talking to Unlock the Science reporter, Ha Wang Meng. Dr. Tessada, it seems that the number of viewers of mainstream television has been declining Mm -hmm. and many young people are not watching television. So what do you think will be happening to the mainstream television? Well, um, people have worried that the mainstream television is going to die, but I personally don't think it's going to be extinct uh, unless that television company, you know, like stop doing their business. But... I'm still believe that they just change, you know, like their platforms. Um, actually, you know, if you look at the content and um, the essence of being TV, it doesn't need that it gonna be broadcasted from TV set only through TV set only. It can be shared or it can be broadcasted through through like online media as well. So I think it still be there for 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 mainstream TV, but in terms of dominant you know like or in terms of hegemony you know or importance it will not be uh, the prime platform for the audience anymore the audience will have more choices to watch tv not only from tv set but from other you know like um, screens or other platforms so this is my, my idea yeah and do you think thailand has too many mainstream television channels considering the state of the current economy Actually, there are so many criticism to to uh, NBTC. You mean national broadcasting? Yeah, 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 yeah. And telecommunication commission, the one who who regulate all of this channel. Uh, well, actually, there are so many criticism to what NBTC that they allow too many channels at the time when when they when they shift from dialog TV to digital TV, right? From like only five to six channels, we jump to tens of um, dozens of um, TV stations without considering that the viewers' behavior changes a lot. So if we, if we give a metaphor to, to the audience or the profit in this kind of um, business as like a big cake, a big piece of cake, like in the past, only five who, who cut the cake, right? But right now, there are so many, so many people to cut the cake. So in this, in this case, I think it's, it's too competitive. And when it's too competitive, like some channels who lack of um, agility, flexibility, or don't have like enough budget, it's not, it's not sustainable, it's not, it's not healthy. So that's why many, many companies withdraw themselves from the, the arena. So yes, I think um, we have too many channels. Do you see any particular shows or programs on mainstream television that have been performing better than others? Hmm. There were a few um, TV shows became talk of the town. Uh, for example, like the Mass Singer from Workpoint channel or the Singer Behind the Wall. Uh, this is another program from, from Workpoint channel as well. I think one thing that make people you know want to watch tv and they have to watch tv is the prime time of the tv if you want to watch tv and you want people to stick to tv you need to create and highlight the value of prime time uh for example if you watch a program like for example the max singer people you know like really come to watch the tv at that time because they want to to know who is behind the mask right uh, who is the, who is the singer behind the mask so this create prime time for, for the viewers because if you don't watch it, 
and people already learn that like your friends um, already watch it and, and they know that who is behind their the mask right tomorrow morning you cannot talk with your friends so so i think like this kind of the 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 feeling and something that you highlight the prime time which is a very very unique uh, characteristic of tv if you can create this kind of feeling your program or your show will be successful on on tv um, from the conventional platform do you see any possible means to help boosting the popularity and viewership of mainstream television some people said that online media is tv killer or people look at online media as a main competitor for on air on air which is like tv and radio right but i, I don't i don't think this is a good idea to look at online media as a killer of tv i want to suggest that why don't we just look at them you know as a package and they have to support each other but you have to think um, strategically for example before you on air um, the real tv show you may um, have to promote your tv program through maybe instagram twitter or tiktok right in order in order to draw attention from um, online to on air and i also want to talk about um, the concept of transmedia storytelling it means that when you when you want to tell the story you don't think only that your program is going to be on tv but if you make the same story through other platforms or other media how you can engage people or how you can even make people you know like create content by themselves but under the universe of your um, story for example a few years before we had a very big hit it's a tv drama from channel 3 that the main actress turned back time to ayutthaya period uh, it was so popular and then people wanted to go to ayutthaya ayutthaya was was so popular uh, was so boom at the time and um, they had collaboration with many brands like 7-eleven you know like they have um, a special product collaborated with this tv drama so you see on air and online have to go together lastly do you have any suggestion for adjustment of mainstream television in the near future okay first of all as i told you strategy is really important and don't uh, look at on air separately you know from on on online on ground so you have to think you know like um, strategically and you have to look at all of the new media ecology um, as as a whole don't, don't look at only a particular part of of um, TV um, conventional TV that's one thing and in order to survive at this at this highly competitive environment you have to develop yourself in almost every aspect for example like um, accessibility how can people reach to your content not only conventional media conventional tv anymore but you have to to do the outreach to the audience and content is really important i think you have to develop and uh, to groom a very good content in order to be very competitive because if you cannot produce a very good content you know although you have um very good platforms you can reach to people but people won't, don't watch it because they have choices in their hands and, and they can just switch it easily. So I think first you have to understand the changing uh, media landscape and the changing behaviors of their audiences. And the second thing is you have to develop content in order to make sure that people will, will come and, and, and look at your content. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. One of the most significant competitors of television in recent years has been video streaming services, which have continuously enjoyed growing users best. Dr. Jess Da from Jualongkorn University told Unlock the Science that television in Thailand, similar to that in the United States, has been facing tough competition from streaming services. Netflix the subscription-based streaming giant of the United States has seen a considerable growth in its audience in Thailand ever since its debut in early 2016. Statista, a major source of market and consumer data, has estimated that Netflix attracts around 546,000 subscribers in Thailand as of 2020, 
which accounted for over half of the total subscribers of all video streaming services in Thailand. In addition to rising numbers of subscribers, video streaming services have intensified their competition with television in terms of content by producing their own original shows and series, some of which have earned high acclaim. In its first quarter financial report of 2021, Netflix said it plans to spend more than 17 billion US dollars on its original programming in 2021 globally. In enhancing its consumer experience further, Netflix introduced Netflix Shop in the United States in June 2021. The shop offers exclusive lifestyle products that are associated with Netflix original programs. With heavy investment in original series and the launch of its fairly first lifestyle shop, Netflix has made clear its efforts to become a key global media content provider. To understand more on how the growing streaming service would affect television in Thailand, a Lock the Science reporter, Ha Wang Meng, talks to Pipop Panichapak, a deputy director general at Thai Public Broadcasting Service, or Thai PBS, which is Thailand's first and only public broadcaster. Thai PBS operates a mainstream television of Channel 3. Mr. Pipop, considering the convenience and originality that streaming services are offering to the audience, how do you think the current mainstream television channels can maintain their audience? The key term is digital transformation. People no longer sit and wait for the program that air on specific time of the day or night. They want things on their demand anytime, anywhere. So that's the first challenge. How can we be uh, more agile in providing the service to the public? So we have to rearrange the broadcasting sector. Yet at the same time, we have to reinvent in a new department, the so-called new media department, which prior to this, there is no such a thing, that there's no such a department. Right now, we have this new media department that focuses totally on providing information to the people who mostly consume their information, news and entertainment through internet. So this is the answer to, my, to your first question. In recent years, some streaming services have started producing interactive programs in which audience can play a role in determining the outcome of a program. Does television in Thailand view this as a significant challenge? I cannot say for the whole industry because for some um, television station like Channel 7 who has a ve- or Channel 3 who have a very strong drama a series program, they might not feel that they are being threatened as much as uh, Thai PBS or The Nation or Thai Rat TV, whose um, main contents are documentary and news. I think those who are doing a news program or a talk show have to be really aware that today people want to be engaged more than just viewing. They want to say something. They want to be able to control the direction of the show even. So so people in broadcasting industry don't have have the skill to do the interactivity program. And this is the kind of skill that I think it has to be um, retrained. The new training is needed. So what will be your suggestion for this uh, retraining program? I think the training that I'm talking about, it's lots, lots of it has to do with changing the mindset. The skill is already there. Actually, in the industry, in the broadcasting industry, we should have more skill in storytelling than, say, you know, regular people who are starting webcasts or streaming um, show. But how can we utilize that? And I see a lot of people can do it really well, like Kun Tapani from Channel 3, who's starting as the news reporter from ITV, then she moves to uh, working at Channel 3, but now she starts the new platform called The Reporters. That is a very good example of adaptability and learning new skill. She use only the mobile phone and doing the mobile journalism from places that things are happening. 
to to wrap it up a little bit, the training, lots of it has to do with mindset, and the TV station should invest in having this new branch of doing the social media the, and the streaming. The next question that yes. I have is that many people believe that streaming services are threatening television. Then, in your opinion, does television have the upper hand against streaming services in any way? In in big events, the TV industry can still do a much efficient job. Just say uh, the bicycle race, Tour de France, um, to do it on multiple camera and on um, a large scale operation, so you can do better than just mobile phone streaming the event. So to 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 elaborate on this, I think television still has upper hand on certain um, issues, like emergency. You know, like um, like we see on Thai TV today nowadays, when the health ministry come and talk about COVID or the vaccination, then people tune in, and uh, maybe um, big production with movie stars and famous people come and do a drama that people still fix. To the TV, but for a more casual engagement on a day-to-day basis, streaming is really, really more likable. Some newly emerging companies in Thailand have been launched to offer streaming video shows, some of which are produced originally by these companies. So, do you see any good prospect of these companies? And it shall be noted that many of these shows were still produced with low budgets. Well, my concern is, um, of course, you know, the quality of the program. We saw a lot of uh, show that based on gambling engage people to do some kind of um, illegal uh, activities. Which in the old days, it's really under the carpet. You have to hide, and if you do it, then the police will come and arrest you. So right now, what we try to come up with is what we call community standard, at least for the group of people that come together and doing the streaming, they should have certain kind of agreement. That it will be a self-regulation kind of agreement. Perhaps they can use some foul word, you know, a bad language. But how bad it is, that it can be used. Can they use hate speech? I don't think so. So that's a kind of regulation that they have to come up with. Talk about these companies. I think it's good that they adapt and think about the business possibility. But at the same time, they have to balance with the social responsibility. Also, I I I hope that these companies will find a mechanism that can regulate themselves. And lastly, apart from offering on-demand videos. Do you think streaming services would pose any further challenges to television in the future? I, I tend to think that it will make everyone better, if you ask me, because this technology will allow more people to come in. So, in short, I I'm quite optimistic about it, and I think if TV stations gonna be uh, left behind, it's only because they don't wake up to this fact and and adapt themselves. But if they move with uh, this big change, I think they can be a player. Even though we have these streamers, but the big players should connect and creating this network. So just imagine that these streamers are everywhere, right? And they're talking about, say, the future of Thailand, how Thailand should be developed. But if the broadcaster can become someone that use those contents. And string them up together to create a larger context to the individuals' talk. Um, that will create a much more fun TV. Despite its declining viewership, television is believed to remain as a vital medium for the time to come. Thai PBS Deputy Director General p i p o p suggests that television should focus on delivering breaking news and covering large-scale events. Such as Olympics or natural elections, to stay in the competition. Also, rather than viewing each other as competitors, streaming services and television may want to think about the possibility of collaboration for mutual benefits and development. Both Dr. Jess Da of Jula Longkorn University and Thai PBS Deputy Director General Pipop 
straight that television in Thailand should try to enhance their adaptability by retaining their clues on new technology and content. This would allow them to maintain their relevance to Thai audience. Otherwise, they may risk losing further share in the increasingly competitive Thai market. Unlock the Science would like to thank Dr. Jesada Salatong of Faculty of Communication Arts, Jualungkorn University, and Pipo Panichapak, a Deputy Director General at Thai PBS. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jura Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page. And our program is also available as podcasts. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Tunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. 